let's go ahead and create our unified toolpath. Under the unified toolpath, I'm going to select my ball end mill. And I'm going to give this a comment of unified finish. We're going to look at the cut pattern now. And we'll start by selecting our machining surfaces once again. You'll notice that above that we have different pattern selections that we can choose from. The very first one that we have in the list is automatic. And automatic does give some basic functions such as parallel. Let's green check and see what this looks like. So it's not quite giving me what I want, but the good thing about the unified toolpath is I can always go in there and make some adjustments. You see the radius there doesn't look too bad. Under the parameters here for the style, I'm going to change this to a morph. Now in this case, it's most likely going to give me something automatic. Um, might like it, might not. But the good thing again, we can always go back and make some adjustments to this. Let's go ahead and remove these options that we have here. So I'm going to start by clicking on the X. And this time I'm actually going to drive between curves. Let's select the morph operation for this example. And you'll notice that automatically, because it's a morph, we get two different curves that we need to select. As we see here, there's no entities. So let's select our top entity first. And let's select the secondary entity. Let's flip this around. And we'll green check. So as we see here, I'm going to minimize this dialog. And you see that we have the green surface. This is our machining region, as well as the blue curve up top and the yellow curve at the bottom. That represents our cut patterns. As we can see here, my machining region is green. And then just above this in my patterns, we have a curve that's blue and yellow. Let's change this to a spiral operation as well. I don't want to zigzag back and forth. And just for an example, I'm actually going to cut the opposite direction, whether it's conventional or uh, let's look at the clockwise and counterclockwise options. I'll leave it for counterclockwise for the time being. And we'll also look at our step over. So our step over is driven by the scallop height. They are linked together. As we can see here, if I change one, the other changes as well. I'm going to leave this for the one thou scallop height. There's more options to talk about underneath our toolpath control for our tool axis. And I'm going to set this for three axis about my WCSZ. As we can see here at the bottom left corner, this is going to be about the Z axis for our tool axis control. For now, um, let's, let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to look at my multi-threading uh, manager here, and this is going to allow me to see the process of the operation as it generates there. And let's uh, run this through backplot. I'll start by press and play, and we can see here that my tool remains in the same z-axis. So. Let's green check OK on this. And we're going to open up our parameters once again. Inside of our parameters, let's go ahead and correct the direction. And we can go back to our back plot here in a second. And um, let's wait for it to process. Green check. And let's look at the back plot here. So now. We could see that we are actually going the proper direction. Of course, we want to climb it on a CNC in most cases. But let's take a look at some of these other parameters that we have. Underneath our tool axis control, I can also set this to a four axis operation. And for now, I'll leave this uh, with surface for a tilt, but there is a lot of other options there as well. 
for the fourth axis control, I need to correct the direction that we are actually tilting about. And just like I mentioned before, we have our WCS in the bottom left corner, Z pointing up. So I want to correct this to follow that Z WCS. We're going to point towards the rotary axis, but underneath this, we have the option to actually push our tool over to the side, as we can watch this little dialog to the right. You can see this option will push the tool to the right off the center. And then we have our other angle, which will tilt the tool at the given angle that we put in. I'll give it a 45 degree. Let's green check on this. And we'll let this generate. And once this generates, we'll actually run it through our back plotter as well so we can see the actual angle of the tool. In this case, let's use our simulation. I think it's a little more fun when we actually see the machine running, right? So once the simulation loads, Mastercam will take the NCI or the operations and run these through the actual machine itself. And I'll uh, go ahead and let this rough out. Let's speed it up a little bit here. And we'll get down to the bottom. And now we can see that fixed 45 degree that we have in place. Notice that the bed here is going to be the only thing advancing. As we zoom in, you'll notice that the distance between the actual trunnion and the machine itself does not move. So it's only advancing forward in the y-axis. This is going to be due to the lock that we have at that 45 degree. This is keeping it at a four-axis operation. So I'm going to close this down and we'll make a couple more adjustments under this unified toolpath. Under the tool axis control, we'll set this to five axis. I'm simply going to drive this to a surface right now. And I like seeing my multi-threading manager here. Just kind of gives me a percentage of what my process is doing as it generates. I can green check. And let's just backplot this one here. And one thing I notice is that tool is tilting pretty, pretty major here. Um, the last thing I want to do is have my table kick up like this towards my spindle. But as you can see, as we go around the part, the tool is following the surface. And I actually want to limit how much it's tilting. And being that we already have a boundary curve above, um, we'll go ahead and take advantage of this, this boundary curve that we use for our roughing operation. So let's green check and go back to our parameters. Under the five axis, we're going to set this to use a from chain here. This chain requires a selection. We can also use tilt angles, etc. But let's just make a simple selection of this curve above. This is going to be our from chain. And let's go ahead and green check. So once this processes, we're going to take a look at how the holder itself or the axis of the tool will follow this chain under our back plot here. Let's go ahead and stop this and I'll rotate it. As our tool goes down, it doesn't matter where on that holder, but in line with the tool itself. As you can see, our tool will always follow that from chain. This will limit the tilt so we're not tilting closer to our table or having the trunnion kick up towards our spindle. There's a couple other options I want to adjust under my linking parameters. As of right now, you can see I got a pretty good tool path, but I want to adjust these options here for my first and last entry as we're spiraling down. And please pay attention to the options under the left as we change the lead in here. You can see my first entry lead in has been added. And if I go do this to the exit, 
you will see that there's a last exit as well. Now by default, if I was to look at the first entry, you could see that these follow the default lead in, out, uh, lead in and outs. Um, we can go ahead and take a look at these defaults right now. I'm going to adjust this arc to be 0.5 and uh, let's just go ahead and copy these over for my exit as well for the lead out. Underneath this, I also like to adjust my plane, so I'm going to set this to a z-axis about that WCS again, and we'll set this for just a few inches above our part. We'll green check OK. As this process generates, we'll see the status as it climbs here. All right, everything looks good. We have our entry and exit now, starting with the entry, and then of course the radial exit coming off. We also have that plane that we put above our part for the three inches. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here a little bit. And let's actually select all our operations. Uh, I want to actually simulate this as well, so let's run this simulation here. Under the simulation, as the part tilts around, this will give us a better visual of what's actually happening on the machine. So we'll go ahead and bypass the roughing here. I'll just speed it up a little bit. And now we'll slow it down and kind of zoom in a little bit here. And what you'll notice here is that the table, the trunnion, is actually tilting gradually as it advances forward. What you're also going to see is the y-axis still advance forward at the same time, giving us a true five-axis operation. So we see that it starts to close the gap. So once we kind of zoom out a little bit here, I'll go ahead and speed this up. And you can get a better visual of that part advancing forward as we see the gap starts to close. So let's close this out. And let's look at the rest of our part, actually. Uh, we have our unified toolpath. We can see the morph operation. We can also choose between any other guide style curves, project as well, if we need to make changes. But I like the toolpath. 